Welcome everyone to the MMA Happy Hour. I am Kyle Anthony, your host. We're here. We have interviews, MMA banter, and betting advice. This week, UFC 299, a massive card, Sean O'Malley versus Marlon Vera. We're going to talk four plays on this card. Excited about it. Listen, there's going to be a lot of violence on this card, so we had to bring in the queen of violence, Ariane Lipsky, to come in, talk some fights. Ariane, thanks for coming by. How you doing? Hi, I'm great. Thank you for inviting me. No, I really appreciate it. I know you're a busy person, but I'm glad we're able to knock this out for you. So um, first thing is, before we kind of get into, you know, the main card, main event, and all those great things, I do want to yeah. touch on your upcoming fight, April 27th. Big fight for you overall. I mean, 11th ranked in the flyweight division. You're facing number 12. Big spot for you. You're knocking on the door of top 10 in the world. A great spot for you here. So how's training going? How's camp going? And just what's your overall thought? on kind of the matchup with Karina Silva in this spot here? So I'm um, really excited about my next fight. So I wasn't expecting to fight in, uh, before June or July because I saw all the, all the opponents was like uh, with a fight upcoming. So I was like, oh, okay, I have to wait and see what's coming after that. But then uh, uh, Karina is supposed to fight against uh, Lauren Murph. Then Lauren Murph got uh, injury and then she pulled off. And then they offered me and I said, okay, I can fight on April. I'm going to be ready for April. Before that, I cannot fight. And then they, they accept that and now, and now I'm excited. The training camp is amazing. I'm getting better and better. You know, like there's a moment of, I'm, I'm, I'm in the moment of my career that I'm just want to get better, you know, and um, knowing my game, I'm just I want to go there and show my improvements. I'm, I know myself even more. I'm getting confident on my grappling, my strike, and my wrestling. I'm excited to be able to fight, you know, like don't have um, much time off. I'm fighting like have enough. I, I'm sorry, not have to say, but like I keep fighting a short, short time. That's what, uh, how I feel comfortable with myself. No, no injury and just fighting as much as possible. And especially you just came off quick work. It was the king versus the queen against uh, Casey O'Neill. You went out there and dominated. And, and, and to your point, I mean, one of your best showings, you went out there, you put some hurt on her and got the finish. So really excited to kind of see how that next fight pans out for you. I know you're going to do fantastic. So really looking forward to that. Um, and, and really you kind of knocking on that door on that top 10. So excited about that. But we're going to focus now on the main event of the evening here now we have an exciting main event here a lot of people have different opinions on it back and forth now if we look at this setup here you got sean o'malley he's minus 275 big favorite here you've got marlon veer on the other side here he's the underdog at plus 220. now o'malley we know what he does he, he's the striker he's rangy he's got some power vera another good striker here as well but he does have some power now these guys fought back in 2020 and you know i don't know your opinion on it but it, but you know you, you got o'malley who's kind of saying hey you know, the leg kick, the nerve thing, he's talking about an injury, but really it looked like it was just a damaging shot from Vera in there. Now we're doing it all over here in this spot. So how do you see this fight kind of playing out here? And who do you think wins and, and how do you think they win? Uh, if I have to bet, I would bet on O'Malley. I think he has, um, I think he has the, the he's had the favorite to win this fight. I do believe he's a, a tough opponent because he's really like long arms, long legs, and he's tall and he knows how to play with this uh, his his body you know but vera has the kicks i think that can make the difference he has the tools to win the fight but like if he tried to go too much but the, at the same time that what he has to do like omali you know how to, how to make uh how to to stay in the long distance and you know the counter attacks he's he has a powerful hand. We can see, we could see this on uh, his last fight. So Vera has the tools to win the fight, but I think uh, O'Malley now, you know, he has the, the champion, the champion moment, and I think he he will win this fight. Do you uh, do you see a finish? Do you see O'Malley getting that knockout? Do you see Vera kind of, you know, lasting a little bit? Maybe if you're going O'Malley, do you think it's a decision? Do you think it's a knockout? Obviously, I don't see a submission happening, but do you think it's either one of those? 
I don't think that's go by bad decision. I don't think so. I think like even O'Malley or even uh, Vera uh, wins, it's going to be by uh, KO or TKO. Vera can win by TKO on the, the, the leg kicks. I think that's the way he can, is trying to find O'Malley and then he can, you know, finish the body kicks and uh, then after that he can find her, her his box but if omalu gonna win i think he can win you know with the the counter attacks with the the hand and with the the high kick yes yeah see for for me i just think the one thing that really separates these two uh, and i agree i i like omalu in this spot i think omalu gets the victory and I think the issue here really for Vera is his low volume. You know, he's very low volume kind of guy and he can kind of play at range a little bit too much, not do enough output and kind of allow it. We've seen, you know, multiple times where he kind of comes back from, you know, being down. He kind of comes back. He has that fight changing power. He's able to do that. So I do think that that's part of it. Plus O'Malley, as, as you were just saying, you know, his range, his reach, you know, how he is with his movement. And I kind of feel that, oh, that O'Malley's not going to want to just slug it out he's going to want to work at range he's going to want to kind of and I, that may give this fight some legs to kind of get to the decision and i'm kind of leaning that way as the as the opportunity here where vera out of his eight losses have never been finished so he has never been finished in the cage that to me shows durability you know with the low volume i'm gonna have to go o'malley via decision which is at plus 130 right now i think there's some value there i think he gets it done but at least we're both agreeing that o'malley gets the job done so i think that <laughs> yeah i agree, I, agree. Uh, I i got your vision i think like he's the champion he's not going for this he like just defend his belt and better has to to push the, the the pace like you said but he he doesn't do this it's not his game so he can surprise for sure like when you are training like we are always trying to bring something new for the fight but like we saw um the kind of fire he is his his ability and he's not the that that fight who push hard and I, I I got your vision and I agree that's 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 a way that can happen. All right, all right. So we agree, but I, I do agree with it that could he surprise surprise O'Malley and shoot for takedowns and you know really just change up a whole thing. That's that's the fun of of, of this entire breakdown. It could be anything uh, in these spots here. So uh, I do, we, I'm glad that we both do like O'Malley in this spot. So the other one here we'll talk about now is going to be uh, Benoit Saint-Denis versus Dustin Poirier. Now you've got Benoit. He's a big favorite here. Now the interesting part about this is that Poirier was the big favorite. When this line opened, it was minus 175. Poirier was a big favorite, and money has not stopped coming in on um, St. Denis here. Now he's become the big favorite here. And I think, you know, part of me thinks it's kind of a little bit of recency bias, what everybody just saw. You know, we just saw St. Denis, you know, spectacular fashion, knock out Matt Frivola. And then we just saw, you know, uh, Dustin get knocked out by Justin Gagey. That starts to kind of change people and, and the recency bias we do forget how good Dustin Poirier is here. So how do you see this fight kind of paying out? And how do you see this uh, this fight ending? Yes, I see uh, that's a good fight for Dustin. I think he has all the tools to fight. I mean, he has experience, he has the power in his box. He knows how to play with the with a uh, fighter who kicks a lot because uh, his opponent kicks a lot. So he knows. And he, uh, he actually, when he kicks, he he lost a little bit the distance. So this is good for Dustin Poirier, you know, with his box. So you can't, I don't think he will be able to put uh, to grappling and, you know, taking uh, Dustin Poirier down. So I believe that the, uh, Dustin is the favorite. Yeah, see, so I mean, that that's that's pretty much kind of how I see this fight. Like, I think a lot of people are more looking at, you know, St. Denis going to get the takedowns. He's going to get that control time. He's going to work. To, and I kind of lean towards he's not going to. You know, if this was maybe an apex or or something, maybe shortening the distance a little bit, and he's just, he's just going to bum rush, you know, dust it and get the takedown, that, that could be possible. But 
I just really think that Dustin's boxing, you know, his sharper striking, you know, his footwork is really incredible where the way that he's able to kind of play with range a little bit. And also, you know, I really don't rate the, 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 the hands of uh, St. Denis very high. He does have fantastic kicks, but if he can't get this to the ground, I think it's going to really start to open up opportunities for Dustin. This is also going to be a five round fight where I think if it was three rounds, you know, maybe we could see St. Denis kind of kind of really going crazy early and winning winning two of the three or finding a finish here. I think Dustin kind of could drag this out a little bit, maybe kind of taking him to deep water. We have, you know, all 13 wins of St. Denis are all by finish. We have not seen him go too far. So I think that can open it up a little bit for him in this spot here. He's durable. Um so and, and and how did you think the fight was gonna end? Which way did you think? Do you think he's gonna get the finish? Or yes, uh... yes I believe that Dust is gonna finish the fight and with uh, KO. I believe so, you know, and also he showed that he has improved his jiu-jitsu. He's a really mm. He's a really good wrestler. He defends take down. He can take take his opponent down. And now he's the, uh, training his counter attack after he defends the takedown. So this is something that he can surprise, you know. But I believe that he can take the finish uh, by KO. I believe in his his powerful hand. And like you said, it's five rounds. You know, they can start to stun a little bit. It can be it can be uh, a fight who goes. By decision but i believe you know that uh, that's gonna finish the fight yeah that's right and and looking at the stats to what we both basically said um that Benoit St. Denis has a 34% takedown success rate. You know, you've got Dustin who's got a 63% uh, success rate on defending takedowns. So, I mean, that, stats don't tell everything, of course, but it, it definitely does kind of sway you a certain way. And, you know, a lot of money has come in on him, but I do like Dustin here. And plus, if we're looking at it just flat out on a, on a, on a bet situation here, I mean, I think it's a big number up for underdog for, uh, you know, a past interim champion who really has faced everybody in the division. Um, so I think that he's in a good spot here to go out and get this victory. So, all right, we agree with that one. I like it. We agree with that one. All right. Yeah, so then people forget about like, he he got the loss, but he just was fighting like with the top of the division, you know, the toughest fight of the division. And now he gonna fight with someone who is coming, you know, like trying and one mm -hmm. to is having the opportunity to go to the top of the of the division. So people like uh you know they they just see the result, the last results and uh, don't really see like um the difference of the level of the, the opponents of, of both fighters. Right. And and again I, I really feel like what people just see always sways them, you know, the other way. If the guy gets knocked okay. out, oh my God, he's got no chin. He's not that good, you know, and then all of a sudden he comes back, he wins. Oh, hey, he's back. He's great. He's amazing. So it is, that's just MMA fan yeah. base, I guess, as a whole. They, they, they go back and forth all the time. That's what it is. But I do think this is a really dogger pass spot that he is going to have an opportunity to get the job done. So we both like Dustin Poirier and the knockout there, I think is very live as well. All right, so the next one we're going to talk about here is going to be Kevin Holland versus Michael Venom Page. This one is a very exciting fight here because now we've got a guy in Michael Venom Page coming over from Bellator. This was a guy that people were really hyped about. They really wanted him over here. They, you know, a lot of big fan base he has. UFC signs him. He comes over here now. And the issue for me when I'm looking at, you know, Kevin Holland, well, one is that he really is, I think, a fantastic striker. He's rangy. He's unorthodox. You know, he's improving his ground game. You know, there are some dynamic attributes kind of to his game. But I think the, the issue for me is that he just makes terrible decisions. And at times he really just seems unmotivated. You know, I've, you know, you have the one guy where, I mean, it's very rare you're going to see somebody in a fight allow another guy to get up. He, he fought Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. They were buddy, buddy. He lets him up. He, uh, you know, uh, Holland gets hurt. And then at the end he ends up losing the fight. And even recently he's talked about how he's not fighting 
I'm sure in your time, Ariana, you've never had to deal with, uh, you know, but for somebody to tell you, hey, I'm going to do MMA and do UFC, but I don't, I don't want the belt. That sounds very weird to me. And that's what Kevin Holland has said in an interview. You know, he's really just here for money. So that to me and just motivation just already drives me over to the Michael uh, Page side here. So how do you see this one kind of playing out and, uh, and who do you think is going to get the victory? So that that fight was hard for me to choose, you know, to to pick someone. Like I I asked for the help of my coach and my husband Renato. I said I would bet on Paige, and he's but like I'm not sure. And he said like, so Kevin Holland knows how to fight. You know, it's hard when you find him. You know, him when he wants when he's on. It's it's hard, you know, like you him, he knows how to fight, he knows how to play, he knows how, how to fake and, you know, uh, bring the fight for his game. So, like I said, he just fight for the money, but sometimes people get motivated for, by money, you know, like, <laughs> it depends how, like, he has mo enough money, like, okay, and he needs more money or not, like, it depends, like, but, uh, but, like, we, it depends on the mood of Kevin Holland. You're right. I, it depends that on is what that. Michael Page, he has all the hype. He's going to, to fight and to show that it's not the, the hype is real. But I'm going to I'm gonna bet on Kevin Holland. I'm going to say it, Kevin Holland. <laughs> all right. See, and, and that, that that's it, it is. I, I, I really would like you said, and absolutely agree with you where Nobody knows what kind of Kevin Holland is coming in. Like that's the that's the real issue with this fight. It's like if he's motivated, I mean, he is he's a top guy. I mean, he's got the ability, he's got the the, the just the the frame for that division, the reach, the movement. And again, he seems like he is elevating. It just seems like he'd rather kind of joke around. He, you know, he talk, he wants to talk, he wants to be entertaining. And that to me almost makes me feel like the UFC kind of set this up for Paige to kind of have a shot here to really be, you know, a legit name within the UFC. Now, obviously that's not how things work. It's not, hey, let's pair these two up and this guy wins. But I, it makes me worry a little bit about the Kevin Holland side. Um, and, and I do think that some of the tricky, you know, footwork of uh, Paige, some of his striking, I think he's a little bit better than Kevin Holland. And this is very close. I mean, he's a small underdog here, um, but I do like Paige. I, I lean that side. I think it's kind of close here and, and rightfully so because this line is pretty, uh, pretty close here. Do you think that Kevin gets the finish or do you think that uh, this is going to be a lot of talking, some punching from the outside and we go to the scorecards? <laughs> Yeah, no, I think it's gonna be by decision. Um, uh, also, I we have to see how Paige is gonna like manage with all the pressure. You know, new organization UFC, UFC is going is putting a lot of hype on him. So this it's a lot of things that we we we, we don't know. Like how mm. they both gonna like manage with the situation. Like Kevin Hall, okay, they got this this fight for Paige, but. It can motivate, you know. It it, it can be some uh, some uh, challenge that can motivate uh, Kevin Holland, and also uh, Kevin Holland fought with like a really high level of mm. uh, in UFC. So it's tough. It's tough. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep uh, uh, Kevin Holland. <laughs> I I almost I almost got you to change your pick. I almost got you to change your pick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it. <laughs> All right, all right. all right, and then we will talk, the last one we will talk here will be Macy Barber versus Caitlin Chikagian. Now, this one is taking place in your division here. Now, we've got uh, Macy Barber. She's number six, and we've got on the other side, Caitlin Chikagian. She is number four here, and you got Barber, 5-0 run right now. She's looked good. She's really starting to get her stride. And then on the other side, you've got Chikagian, who's been around for quite some time, but she's still on a four and one run over her last five, still able to go out there. Her only loss was to Manon Fiore, who is number three, six and zero in the UFC. She has done some great things too. So how do you see this one out? You know, I don't know if you want to add some trash talk in there and kind of, you know, you know, mock one of them to build some hype for your chance when you fight one of these, these ladies here, but who do you think is going to win? And how do you think this is going to go down? Uh, I believe that Macy Barb is going to win this fight. I think it's a better fight for her about the moment. You know, like I said, she come from, from five wins in a, in a row. Also, she has improved her grappling, her wrestling. Her Actually, her wrestling has improved a lot. Mm -hmm. And Caitlin's occasions, she's, 
is a tough opponent because, like I said, the, uh, O'Malley, you know, like it's the same thing about her. You know, they are range, they are long, and they know how to fight. Actually, but the difference is like she just make point. You know, she just d doesn't finish the fight. She just like touch and make point and keep the distance. And I think the the the, the wrestling of Mace Barb and also her striking, her powerful on on her box. And also her kicks, you know, it can make the difference. I think she gonna get swing. Also, she has been fighting more often than than Katie. Mm. Has no fight. I don't know. Maybe one year, one year and a half. Like yeah, I think it's a year and a half. Yeah, like, it's a long time. I mean, I'm the fighter who like who see my improvement when I'm fighting. You know, like in a short. Um, can you help me? How can I say like when you fight like often like you want to keep fighting? You want to stay yeah, active? Yes, yes, exactly. Stay active. You see your improvement, and this make completely difference. I, I think that's gonna make uh, all the difference for the fight. So I'm gonna keep on on May start. Yeah. So here and and I I have been I flip flop back and forth on here kind of the way and and a lot of your points. I mean, it really to me is is gonna have to come down to the wrestling of Barber, if she can get those takedowns. And, and I think it's almost like a power, you know, the power and grappling versus the volume and movement of, of you know, uh, Caitlin, because that's her thing. And again, to your point, you know, she doesn't have the power, Caitlin. She just is more pitter patter shot. She has no finishes in the UFC. So if she does get this victory, there's a, a really high probability it's gonna be by points, but then it comes down to really the damage. And, and now the UFC is, has this big push on damage, on damage, on damage, and that's, really where Macy could have any success at all would be having the more powerful shots, having the strength, landing the bigger shots. Could she really hurt her and that kind of thing? Absolutely. And, you know, I do think that the only thing that I would lean, that I'm picking Caitlin is more for the, the price here, just because she's such a big underdog in this spot. And plus 180 to me seems like a little bit too wide here, but you know, I think that really her outpointing, if she can't get the takedown, I do think that Caitlin has a chance to work at range. She's very good just kind of staying out of danger, Caitlin. I mean, it, at times people kind of call it boring, I guess, but uh, she's very good at just staying at range, working her distance, finding an opportunity to just outpoint, you know, you know, yelling every time she lands and just trying to really kind of find an opportunity to, to bank around. So I am going to lean here, Caitlin Chikagin here, plus 180, but do you think that Macy gets the finish here, or is it going to be uh, one of those ones where we get to the decision? Uh, I believe that's going to be by decision. I think she's going to win. She's going to hurt. I, I like. I know what you said. I agree with you. Like, Kate, she gets number four for a reason. She know how to mm. use her game. She know how to to put her game on the the fight. You know, keep the distance. Just uh, make point. Also, she's a black belt jiu jitsu, so she, he she knows how to finish. She has a good jiu jitsu. But I think the Macy Barb is getting stronger. Uh, her wrestling also, I forgot to say about her uh, cage, when she grabbed on the cage, also she she, she knows how to, to hurt the opponent, how to make her opponent make uncomfortable. And she don't even try to take down. She's just like, you know, winning the fight and, and hurt the opponent. So I think all the two, she has more tools to win the fight, but I agree with you. Um, Caitlyn has to. Yeah, she can win. She can win. It depends how we're gonna see her. Uh, her perform on Saturday. All right, all right. So there we have it. We broke down UFC 299 card with the Queen of Islands, Ariane Lipsky. So let's see how we do. I'm feeling good about these. We're gonna see how it goes here. We'll see what goes on here with Barber versus Caitlin. Here we're on different sides. We will see how it goes Saturday night, but really a great card overall. But Ariane, I want to thank you for coming on today. Really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. All right. We'll definitely do this again soon sometime. Appreciate it. And uh, let's make some money this weekend. What do you say? We'll see you next weekend. Take care. Okay. Bye-bye.